68 UPS. We hear boomers, now but people like me of my generation, attacking millennials, 20-somethings. They attack them all the time, even on this network. Some call them, the, uh, the millennials, they call them lazy or entitled. My next guests see things very, very differently. In their new book, Two Billion Under 20, authors Stacey Ferreira and Jared Kleinert bring together 75 stories from ambitious and successful young people. Welcome, Stacey. Welcome, Jared. Good to have you with us. Thank you for having us. Uh, Stacey, first of all, two billion under 20. Now, that's, a, that's the size of this group? Yeah, there are two billion people on Earth today who are 20 years old or younger. And that, you say, is this particular generation. That's not millennials, though, is it? That's just a big bulge in the population. It, it's a big bulge, and it encompasses some of the millennials. Okay, yeah. Are they, uh, Jared, are they lazy? Are they entitled? What do you think? So if you go on Google and you type in <laughs> millennials are, you'll actually get the auto-suggestion drop-down of screwed, lazy, entitled, narcissistic. <laughs> it's amazing. If you get 10 drop-downs, you'll have one positive one. But we actually think that with the stories that we brought into the book, we're going to inspire young people to act on their passions in life and then also help older generations learn how millennials tick, whether you're selling to them, Good. parenting them, Good. et cetera. Okay. Are you both millennials? We're yeah. late millennials. <laughs> late millennials. Yeah. <laughs> Well, how old are you? I'm 19. <laughs> I'm 22. No, 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 no. Millennials are older than that. They're 20-somethings, aren't they? No, so the only generation defined by the government is, is boomers. So that is huh. you know, the only de defined generation. Millennials, everyone has a different gen er, yeah. definition. We say 16 to 35. And then Generation Z is the one after that. So you are millennials? Yes. All right, Stacey, I, you've got 75 examples to choose from. Give me one example of a fine young millennial. Definitely. So we have a millennial in our book. Her name is Paige McKenzie. And what she's done is she started her own YouTube channel at 16 years old called The Haunting of Sunshine Girl. And Paige is one of those examples of someone who's just gone out and created her own life. She forewent college and said, I'm going to start this YouTube channel. And now it's her full time gig. Is she wealthy? She's making enough money to support herself and, and her mom doing this. See, back in my generation, you had to have greed. If you wanted to become wealthy, you were considered to be greedy and therefore bad. But here's this young lady. She wants to make money. You don't think she's bad, do you? I think she's great. Not at all. She's fantastic. She's, she's the perfect example of someone who's turned their passion into a lifestyle. Okay. Jared, give me an example from the 75 of a good <laughs> millennial. Yeah, I think Sam McCulloch is another great example. He's an Olympian. He competed in the 2012 Games. And then he's also gone on to raise over $40,000 on Kickstarter for a new tea company. So he's taken his same drive for the Olympics and for gymnastics and took that into the entrepreneurial world. Liz McDonald, you're not one of those who say that the millennials are lazy and entitled. No, you never, I you never said that. I never you? say they're lazy. Um, I but. do want to bring up a study from San Diego State University that found that 40%, and they've done this study since every, survey since every year since 1976. They say that the millennials, 39%, say they don't want to work hard. That's versus 25% of the boomers who said that at that time. So they don't want to work hard at what they do. You could do a YouTube channel easily from your bedroom and make a lot of money if it is a hit. <laughs> so? I would argue against that. I would say that, that doing a YouTube channel, that is hard work. You're on camera every day. You're coming up with a script for yourself. Um, you're the one that's going out promoting those, making sure that you're getting fans and followers to make sure that you're able to get enough ad revenue to, to make But you don't have to leave the house. Money. You don't have to get dressed up and leave the house, right? It, it's still hard work. It's, God, you're it's so whatever cranky. You, <laughs> you really <laughs> are. I'm a realistic, pragmatic boomer. Yeah, well, I'm a boomer, too. How long did it take you guys to assemble all this material and write the book? It's about a, a two-year process in the works from compiling all the stories and you know, interacting with people from over 20 different countries and then working with St. Martin's Press, our publishers, to actually get it out. You, so you, you started this at 17, you're yes. 19. Yes, so it was actually inspired by uh, Peter Thiel's Thiel Fellowship, which is a very controversial education initiative. And we took the inspiration that he gave us with, through his Thiel Fellowship and all the events that they do and wanted to bring together a book that not only inspired young people to act on their passions, but then helped corporate America you know, better market to millennials, better hire and retain top millennial talent. Well, look, I am inspired. Jared and Stacy. I don't think Liz is exactly inspired. I'm impressed. Yeah, she's impressed. She, she needs right, to read go. the book. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. Buy it. Okay. I'll buy it. Make some money for these kids. Yeah, sure. Two billion under 20. Good story. Thanks very much, ladies. Thank gentlemen. you. Thank you so much. The